Hey, what's up guys? So today I wanted to do a video about how to set up a Nikon DSLR. In particular, how I like to set mine up uh, in hopes that it may help you. Now keep in mind that I'm mostly a landscape photographer who does some portraits here and there. Uh, my needs may be very much different than yours if you do uh, a lot of sports or wildlife, for example. So the first thing I like to do on any uh, Nikon DSLR is to reverse the light meter indicators. So I want the left side of the indicator to represent underexposed and to the right to represent overexposed, just like you see on a histogram. So you can change this uh, by going to option F12 in the control menu and hitting the reverse indicators uh, section here. And uh, as you can see, the way it comes from the factory is in the top, but my preference is at the bottom. All right, so uh, if you do end up swapping the direction of the light meter, uh, you're going to have to go in and change the direction of the uh, shutter speed and aperture uh, control dials. And there's a place in the menu where you can do that here. And basically, um, you know, the way I want mine set up is I want a wider aperture to the right to show that it lets in more light. Uh, and same thing with the shutter speed, I want a longer shutter speed to show to the right since that also lets in more light. Effectively, you just have to swap it around and there is a place in the menu to do that. Uh, and if you look here, the way it shows on the camera, um, if you wanted your setup the same way as mine, you do reverse the uh, shutter speed and aperture dial. So this tip only applies to certain cameras. Uh, the newest cameras already have moved the ISO button to the uh, new location as shown in my image here. Uh, and this makes it much easier to shoot with one hand because you can push that button and adjust uh, on the main dial your ISO. So this makes it a whole lot easier shooting in general, uh, but especially for one-handed shooting. So if you have some of the older cameras, like in my case the D800, you can assign the movie record button to uh, control the ISO. So this is really helpful uh, and especially if you're going to switch between uh, some of the new and old cameras. Like for me, I have a D500 and a D800 and uh, this makes it a whole lot easier. One thing though, you may need to do a firmware update in order to be able to assign this function. Now the exact number is going to change from camera to camera. In this case, we're going to use F13 to assign the movie record button. And again, this only uh, became an option after I did the firmware update. Uh, but anyway, once you go in, uh, you can change that to whatever you want. In our case, we're going to set it for ISO. So for me, one of the things that sets apart a uh, good professional camera from a uh, you know bad camera is the uh, ability to have all the direct controls and buttons right on the outside of the camera to keep you from going into menus and having to menu dive and things like that. Um, so for me, uh, definitely uh, most of the good cameras have direct controls on the outside already, uh, but they also usually give you some options for uh, function buttons and things that you can uh, change the function of, reassign, that sort of thing. So you definitely, if there's some use that you uh, have that doesn't already have a uh, direct control on it, uh, it can be very helpful uh, to set those up and to be able to uh, assign them and use the camera more efficiently. So the next tip that I've got for you is to uh, definitely use the My Menu section of the uh, Nikon cameras to go in and put in some things that you don't have a direct button for, but you want to be able to access pretty quickly and easily. For example, I like to use the non-CPU lens data, the virtual horizon, and uh, the viewfinder grid uh, are all things that I put in my menu. Uh, and if you take a look here uh, at the very bottom, you can add uh, items to it. So you can pretty much add whatever you want from Nikon's normal menu into your own menu. It makes it a whole lot faster and easier. Now I do like to use back button focusing and effectively for those of you who don't know what that is, uh, you untie the auto focusing 
uh, mechanism from the shutter release button. And that way you can take a photo no matter what your camera thinks is in focus or doesn't realize is in focus. Uh, so that way the, 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 sh the camera always fires immediately right away no matter what. And then from there, uh, so that w what that does, you can use this AF on button to tell it when you want to autofocus. So that's really nice because once you set a focus, a lot of the time you can pretty much leave it alone unless you're changing the distance from yourself to the subject. So, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, if you're shooting portraits, you might set the autofocus once and then for the next five or so shots, you know, 10 shots or whatever, you may be fine until you move again. So it's really nice to untie those two uh, functions from this shutter release button. And there's a couple things you have to do to go do that properly. But it's very nice and, you know, it might take you a day or two to get used to, but once you do, uh, it's hard to go back to relying on the c camera to do that for you with the shutter release button. Okay, so in order to do that, you go to this um, section here, autofocus A4, and that is AF activation. And what that does, you turn that on or off. So, for example, here they have it attached to the shutter button and the AF on button. Uh, I want it to happen only here and not when I hit the shutter button in the front. So that's what I like to do. I set it to AF on only. Now if you do that, uh, you may want to go in and tell the camera to take a photo anytime, not just whenever it, it thinks it's in focus. Okay, so what you do is you go here to AFC Priority Selection. And I set mine to basically take the photo no matter what. If I hit the shutter button, I want it to take a photo regardless of what the camera thinks is in focus or not. And so I do that all around the board. I want it to set to release. So that way I decide the focus. I set these both to release, AFS and AFC, although generally I only have mine on AFC anyway. What I do is I like to keep my autofocus set to autofocus continuous so that as long as I hold this button down, it will try to acquire focus and follow, uh, you know, moving subjects and things like that. So I like to keep it on continuous and then hold the button when I need that. If, if I don't and it's a s still subject, I can hit it once, it focuses, and then I just shoot as many times as I want. Uh, the other thing I would like to mention uh, that you know may be inadequate for some, I like to use just a single uh, center po focusing point, and I use that, and then I focus and then recompose my shot if I want the subject off center. I'll aim it at the subject, hit the AF on, move my frame, my camera a little bit to where I want it framed, and then shoot. So that works really well for me for portraits. Uh, and also works very well for landscapes. Uh, you know, both of those types of photography, it's not so much about how you acquire focus, but more about where you're focusing than it is how you get there. You know, one thing, uh, one little trick that I did pick up over the years that I like to do though, uh, when I throw my camera in the bag, I like to set it up to basically like an automatic mode if your camera has it. Uh, that way, if I see something that I really want to shoot really fast and I only have a moment to get my camera out of the bag, I can pick it up, take one photo, shoot it, and have something. Now, it may not be perfect, so if I have extra time, then I'll switch into, you know, aperture priority or something like that, take a couple more shots, and then, you know, if I have a whole lot of time, then I'll switch over into full manual and start, you know, looking to take the shot that I really want. Um, because your settings matter a whole lot and so the way that you uh, set the camera at the time affects the way your photo is going to look. Um, just as simple as that. Especially if you're looking to do something high key or low key, something like that. Uh, it just makes a huge difference. So your camera cannot predict what you really want. Uh, all it knows how to do is to basically give you a neutral gray reading uh, of an exposure and so if you want anything other than that you have to tell the camera what you want to do.
So that pretty much does it for how I like to set my camera up. Uh, but you know, I, everybody's a little different, uh, but a couple of those tricks I think really help me out a lot in the field, make things fast and easy. I pretty much have the camera set up the same way all the time. So um, anyway guys, uh, if you have any questions about your camera, how to set things up, what you want to, you know, if anything that you'd like to uh, know about or do differently, then uh, feel free. Any recommendations that you have for how my camera might better serve me, you can feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll check those out. You know, I didn't use back button focus for many years. Uh, so when I finally did, it was just a huge change in the way I could use my camera. And, uh, you know, if you pretty much look around, anybody, uh, everybody tells you that once they got used to back button focus, there's just no going back. So, uh, and I'm, I'm right there with that camp of people uh, on that one. So, you know, take the extra day or two to get used to it. But once you do, uh, you'll find it to be pretty much the best way to, you know, shoot in every situation.